Let's say you're building an e-commerce website and you want to use WooCommerce as well as Next.js. That's what we're going to take a look at in this video. So we're going to set up a Next.js website that connects to WooCommerce here. You can see here I have set up WooCommerce with my products here. Let's say we have three products here and that is exactly what I see here, these are some simple images. So if I click on the boots one here, if I click here, you can see, I can see the individual information for that particular product. So that's what we're going to take a look at, how you can set up WooCommerce with your own custom front end with Next.js. Now you need to host WooCommerce somewhere, right? Or WordPress. So for that, we're going to use Cloudways. Cloudways is the sponsor of this video. And if you watch some of the other videos I have with Cloudways, you know we can host WordPress and other PHP applications very easily with them. They are actually a digital ocean company. And here in the dashboard, I'll show you why we want to use them. Basically, it's very easy, right? So we can very easily set up a server here. Uh, I set up a server here with digital ocean, but you also get the option to host it with other uh, server providers and they give you a lot of things out of the box right so they make it very easy for you it's called managed hosting to set up a server that hosts well in this case we're gonna host a woocommerce application and we're gonna build a next.js front end that connects to that and by the way to get a good deal on cloudways make sure you check out the link in the description okay so i added a link there so if you want to sign up for cloudways you can use that link so let me show you how that's done. I'm going to delete everything here. We're going to start from scratch and I'll show you step by step how I set this up. All right. So I just removed everything. So now I just have this Next.js app, um, which is basically just a very simple boilerplate here. So you can see I have one page here. That's this page here. We just have shoe store. And then here we have a div. That's a grid where we would like to display some product photos and some featured products. So uh, right now it's empty so we would like to set up woocommerce where we can manage all of the products and then we would like to fetch those products here into our Next.js app. Right, so how do we go about doing that? Well, first, let's actually start by setting up a WooCommerce instance. So that's very easy to do with Cloudways. Right, so here in Cloudways, after you sign up, uh, here we can create a server. I actually already created the server for a different projects. But here, let's say we start from scratch. So I, I say add server. And then here we have some standard options out of the box, right? So in a previous video, I actually showed you how to set up WordPress by itself. So you can set up a blog, for example, and you can manage the content in there, but you can see they also offer WooCommerce here, really for e-commerce websites. You can also have uh, custom PHP apps, Laravel and Magento as well, right? Magento, of course, may also be a very interesting option for e-commerce sites. I'll show you that in a different video. Right, we're going to go with WooCommerce in this video and let's give this a name of uh, Woo app, Woo server, and I'll just keep it like this. All right, so then here on Cloudways, it's actually a digital ocean company. So you need to pick which server provider you want to use. And by default, of course, it's going to be digital ocean. But if you want, you can also pick Vulture, Linode, Amazon, or Google. And then here we can pick the server size. So I'm going to go with four gigabytes. And here I can pick a location. Okay, I can host multiple apps on the same server, by the way. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to click on launch now and it will take a couple minutes, right? So here you can see it will take some time to set up the server, but that's okay. Okay, and after a couple minutes, it's finished. So I can click on this and this is my server. You can see we get an IP. We can SSH into that if we want, but we don't need to do that here. Out of the box, it also gives you some options here for monitoring, security, vertical scaling, uh, backups. So this is our server. Now, by default, it has already installed an application on the server, right? So you can have multiple applications on the same server. Uh, right now, we're just going to have one. So if we click on this, you can see we have one app here. And here we can immediately go to the admin panel if we want. So here we have the familiar WordPress login here. So then here we can get the credentials, which have automatically been created for us as well, just copying the password and here I can then log in. Okay, so here I have my WordPress home screen and you can see here I have WooCommerce, right? So here we have all these options. Now here we can go to products, payments, analytics, but let's stick to products for this video. So here we can click on all products. And of course, by default, we don't have anything yet. All right, so all of this is now set up for us. So just to give an overview here of what you get out of the box with Cloudwise, you also here you get database options, database credentials. Uh, you also get a staging environment. So, you know, if you want to test something before pushing it to production, you get options here for monitoring, analytics and logs, vulnerability scanner, some options here for bot protection and malware protection. Uh, domain management, right? So if you already have a domain, you can set it up here. Cron jobs, 
SSL out of the box, very helpful as well. And I would say very helpful as backup and restore, right? Always a tricky issue, but you get that here and some other options here as well, right? So you get pretty much everything that you need out of the box. So I would say check out Cloudways if you like that managed hosting. So just to continue here with our project here. So we, now we have everything set up. WooCommerce inst instance is running on that Cloudways server. So now we can quickly add some products. So here I'm going to add a new product. I'm just going to call it uh, Boots. And here I can set a product image. So I'm just going to pick a image here on my computer and set that as the product image. Okay, wonderful boots as the description. And I can set things up, yeah, things like the price. Okay, regular price, $99. Okay, so then I'm gonna click on publish. Okay, so that's the first uh, product. Now, if you want, you can click on view products and you can actually see this standard uh, WooCommerce site or UI or front end that you get out of the box. We don't want this one. We wanna have our own front end with Next.js, right? So here, we don't really need that. Um, so let me actually add the other two as well. We'll have some dress shoes. Amazing dress shoes, $50. And I'll add an image. Okay, I will publish this as well. All right, then one more sneakers. Cool sneakers for $35. And I'll set this image. Okay, I'm going to click on publish. Okay, so now we have three products here, right? This is all in my WooCommerce uh, instance. How do we now get that data into our Next.js application right here, right? So this WooCommerce instance is running on this Cloudways server. How do we hook into that? Well, WooCommerce has a REST API that we can hook into. WordPress in general, if you have data in there, you may also want to set up a GraphQL API instead in case you don't like the REST API. Uh, you can do that with plugins. Probably something similar for WooCommerce as possible. However, here we're just going to use the WooCommerce REST API. And you can see here, if we want to get all the products, there is an endpoint here that looks like this. Right? So you need to take your base URL that we get from Cloudways. Right? So if we go here, Cloudways gives you the... Uh, application URL and right? that's going to be something random here dot cloudways apps dot com and then after that you can tack on this to get the actual data let's actually try and see what we get all right so here if you do that you can see we actually do get a response but it actually gives us like a authentication issue actually so if we look here, you can see we do need to submit a consumer key and consumer secret as well so where do we get that well Let's go back to WooCommerce here. So here under WooCommerce uh, settings and then advanced. And then here we have an option for the REST API. Here you can see we can add or create an API key. So I'm just going to create here and I will just say first. So here you need to specify the permissions. Now in this case, we're just going to read. We're just going to uh, get the product data. If you also want to do writes, now you want to update data and things like that. You want to change the permissions accordingly. Here we're going to say generate API key. All right, so here I have my key and secret. Make sure you don't leak any unnecessary data to other people. So be careful with this. So I will actually put this in some environment variables. So let's quickly create a .env.local file. Right, I just added this here in the root of my project and we need two for the consumer key. Let's copy that. I'm going to paste that right there. And then also for the secret, I'm going to paste this one right here. Okay, so now I have my uh, credentials. So now we need to be able to actually make this get call with those credentials. So let's actually try doing that in code. It's just going to be a little bit easier to also include the credentials. So here on the home page, we actually want to get that data, right? So here we can use just fetch directly in the component. This is a React server component. I'm using Next.js here. And we can just fetch directly in here. You do need to mark the component as async here. So then we do need the uh, URL. So I'm gonna use a template literal here. So the URL is what uh, Cloudways gives us, right? So let me actually, uh, I just copy it from here actually. I just paste it like this. Actually, we don't need to make it a template literal for now we can just use a normal string because we will pass the credentials here as part of the options object here so let's see what the copilot can uh, do for me here because the format is always a bit tricky here okay so this is actually how i got it to work so you have headers and then it's going to be a basic authorization it's going to convert it into base64 format but basically it's just the consumer key colon secret right? this is how i got it to work so we will get some response here and it's going to be in json format so we're going to parse that as json JSON into a normal JavaScript. And let's actually see what we get here and see if we can actually get data from that WooCommerce instance. So 
that looks good actually but let me actually refresh the home page and trigger that call again okay so it looks like we got some data here indeed so you can see here yeah i'm actually getting product data here right so here we have uh let's actually scroll up yeah so it's going to be an array of three products so here the first one that actually gives me is the sneakers and it has all the information the slug and a description right in html actually and let's see the images yeah so here we have images okay so that's how we now have product data let's actually output those three images here on the home page here so here i just added one div for each image i'm actually wrapping it in a link because if you click the image we want to navigate so here what you can do is i can take the data that we got the first product i want to take its slug right so typically i mean you could use an id but typically we want pretty url but typically we want pretty urls so you want to have like nice dash sneakers in the url and not some zero one two three uh, id so that's what people call a slug, also very typical for blog posts. So that is actually already part of WooCommerce. And then here we get the image. I can just use images to take the first one and use its source, right? So I, ju I just did that very easily for all of them. Um, now, when you do that in Next.js, you will get an issue because you're using an image that has a URL that has that WooCommerce uh, with Cloudways in the URL. So we do need to add the base url here to our next.js config so here i can go to next config and here i added basically two hosts so here i added the cloudways url here so if i serve an image from this server it's going to be accepted by next.js let me try this again refresh and now you can see i am showing those three images here from my woocommerce instance in my Next.js app, right? So now, of course, if I click on, let's say this one, I'm going to be navigated to slash products slash sneakers. If I click on the other one, it's gonna be slash products slash dress shoes. So this is now the format of the route. Of course, let's also display the individual product information here. So we need to create a page for that. So in Next.js, we need to create a folder for products and then a dynamic route here for the actual slug. So let's quickly do that here. So we have app, we want product and in there we have a dynamic route right so you need to use square brackets and then we have another page the tsx right so this page will be used for all the slugs since we need to use this particular page for all of those slugs we're going to render something different depending on the slug so we do need to know what's in the url so next chance will give you that as a param basically whatever you specify as the name here that's how you can access it on the param so it's going to be params.slug because that's how i named it here in the folder so then we want to get that individual product information so i can make another fetch call to that uh, cloudway server with this uh, url we may actually also want to put this in an environment variable the base url but i will leave it like this so we can do again slash products but this time we want something specific so we have a query param in here we say slug is params.slug right so whatever's in the url is going to be the product that we're fetching all right so here we have the authentication so then we are going to render just the image of that product the name of the product description price and some purchase button so now you can see here if i have dress shoes in the url i am indeed properly rendering the relevant product information right coming from my woocommerce instance so i think that's pretty cool now if i go to sneakers let's see if it works for sneakers as well sneakers yeah so here that looks good and the boots let's take a look yeah so now this works as well right so we can manage our e-commerce data here in woocommerce and then we can query the data into our Next.js app like this. All right, now just as a matter of optimization, we would like to have our pages be statically generated. So that if somebody goes to this uh, product page, for example, that the HTML is already waiting for them and we don't have to compute all of this and fetch over and over again. How do we know if the pages are statically generated? Well, we can quickly run a build here. So I can do npm run build and it will give you some output about that you can see here generating static pages and then here at the end you can see the home page is statically generated right but here the uh, product product individual product page is actually server rendered on demand meaning whenever there is a request coming in we're going to run all of this code again right which is very wasteful and also not fast for the user because we have to wait for this so it would be nice if this can be statically generated as well now by default all your pages are static actually except in this case it's a dynamic route so it's going to be dynamically rendered because there could be you know an infinite amount of slugs so it cannot generate all of those right so you need to you can specify which ones you want to be statically generated by exporting a function actually called generate static params so here again we can get all of our products because we want all the product pages that we have to be statically generated so we fetch all the products and then here 
we're going to convert whatever we get into an array of slugs, right? So here then it's going to run all of those slugs as if you're passing them as an input here when it's being pre-generated. So now if I run the build again, and actually I do need to add the authentication information here as well. All right, so now let me try running this build again. You can see generating static pages. Now it's actually eight because we have three product pages. So now you can see here we have products slug. It has generated three pages for the products that we have as well. Right, so I think that's a nice optimization. So now if somebody goes to that page, nothing has to be fetched, nothing has to be computed. The HTML is already there waiting for them. Now, what happens if we actually make a change? So here with the boots, $99, maybe the price actually changes. And right, so here with the boots, it's possible, of course, that here, a uh, quick edit, you know, we may actually change the price to something else, to $80, let's say. If I now update, and if now somebody would go here, we would not see $80 here because the HTML is still the same HTML that was pre-generated. And also, by the way, during development in your Next.js app, Next.js will cache certain things. So if you actually want to see it right now, you may actually also want to delete the .next folder. But in production, of course, we want to make sure that we can also update the HTML that was pre-generated, right? So the static generation is called SSG, but the updating is more like ISR on-demand revalidation. So what you can do is you can use webhooks and you can set up webhooks for WooCommerce so that will send you a request to your server and we can make we can pick any route we want, but API revalidate is a common one. And so you will get an incoming request here from WooCommerce and you can deal with that here. And so it's gonna be a post, and so webhook is typically a post request. So here we can have some logic. You can grab whatever is the payload of the webhook and you make sure you it's actually coming from WooCommerce and your actual server and not somebody else trying to trigger the route handler here. And then here you can use revalidate path from next cache. So if we have a products page that lists all the products that maybe also with our price says that page needs to be updated, right? Or in, in, or an individual product page like this one, right? So you can use revalidate path or revalidate tag as well. So that's something you may want to take a look at as well, right? So these are some optimizations that we can make in Next.js. Now Cloudways also gives you some optimizations that you want to take a look at perhaps. So we are using uh, one server here. It can run multiple apps on this same Woo server and I'm running a flexible app here right so here in the Cloudways flexible these are the applications I'm running this is another one but they also offer Cloudways autonomous which is a more powerful solution as right? so this is also something you may want to take a look at it has some more advanced features for what they call mission critical websites which they've built on Kubernetes right so here this is something that you also may want to take a look at it helps you with auto scaling your website and you may also want to take a look at Cloudways new malware protection add-on which is powered by Immunify 360 which they also allow you to use on the Cloudways platform. Right, so these are some additional optimizations that you may want to take a look at. In any case, I would like to, I want to thank Cloudways for sponsoring this video. I would say check them out. You can find a link in the description. I'm Wesley, by the way, I'm a brand ambassador for Kind, which is also a brand sponsorship. And I want to thank you for watching the video. Hopefully it was helpful with setting up Next.js with your WooCommerce instance. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.